okay so inheritance i will create one more class to explain that i would say that as child uh, implementation something like this right so what is inheritance inheritance is nothing but acquiring properties of parent class so if you assume that this is your parent class and you can have one more class and that class can have access to all your properties which we can say as variables and methods into your child class so that's why i created a naming convention as child so that basically to keep it in very simple word whatever methods and variables you declared in oops demo class you can bring all of them to this new child imp implementation class whatever you are building now without redefining properties or methods again you can simply inherit all the properties from your parent to child class okay this is really required when you are building automation frameworks now you will actually a create a browser invocation code in your parent class which you will say that as a base class it will have how to open a browser which is the starting point for every test case to run so child classes will be all your test cases where you will inherit your parent class for all your test cases so that so that automatically you can call that browser invocation method directly from this parent to child class you need not again declare and implement every time in all your test cases so once you declare them in your parent class and you inherit that parent into your child class and then simply call that method just like how we called here you see that you called get data here similarly you can directly call this into your parent sorry another class without even creating an object okay let's see so now we are able to call all these methods summation get data everything after we create object right if you have this inheritance from parent to child mechanism you need not create object of this parent class i know theoretically it's little tricky to gain everything but let's see practically and i hope that you will get complete concept by end of this lecture class and we can say there's something called child implement child something like this the only syntax what you need to remember if you want to inherit this sorry c will start with small letter if you want to call that parent as you are uh, inherited here open the brackets and give the class name what is the class name here calculator right carefully place that calculator word inside this brackets that's it you have successfully inherited a parent class called calculator into this child class so now you can call the methods directly of this calculator here without even creating object for this class you see that you have one suggestion import this calculator class you have to do it right because if you don't do that how would this test know where exactly this calculator class is present and when you click this and this is the import statement and this is also something new which you need to understand in python this is how you will import any other classes from oops demo this is the file name you have to tell from which file name in that file name import class name this is how syntax forms whereas in java you will simply say import space and class name right but in python it's little different you have to say from keyword and then space file from where you are importing and then import keyword again and the class name it does automatically in pycharm you need not remember anything we just clicked on that auto suggestion link right and that's it so let me show how easy it is now i know you are little confused but so i have to give one more variable here let's say 200 okay and i would create one method here get complete data something like this self will be automatically 
with a first parameter in any method you declared in class. Do remember that. So return I want to return num2 and you know if you want to return any class variable you have to either use um, child imp.num2 or self.num2 which we just saw in our previous lectures self.num2 plus and you see that when you say self dot you are getting access of parent class variables and methods as well see it carefully here we did not define num here num variable comes from oops demo class which is our calculator and here is what we declared but still it is accessible here we did not create any object of that parent class but still we are able to access all our parent class methods and variables how does it possible it's possible because you have put that parent class name in the brackets when you do that python treats this as an inheritance and give all the properties method access to your child class of its calculator okay so self dot let's say num so 200 plus 100 300 now again plus self dot and you also another know that there is a get data method called here this get data had whole different logic or oh, summation let's use this summation have whole different logic that first number second number and calculator now so all the sum whatever it returns it we are bringing here so basically you are calling that summation method what's the exact method name s is a caps right s dot summation right perfect now what happens what will be the sum let's see okay that's all i want to do it now this is my child class now i want to call this method you know that if you want to call any method in your class you need to create object to create object first come out of that class make sure you are in the beginning right and then now create child object i am creating object for this class and i would say obj is my object name for that specific class so i am just trying to call this method get complete data that's it so obj dot get complete data this is the method i am trying to call okay i'll print it so what happens will this work it will throw some error because good that you are calling this method self.num2 which is 200 plus self.num as you are inheriting i told you that this num value will be accessible here as well so num equals to 100 here so 200 plus 100 300 good it will not fail here also it will fail in this method because summation method when it tries to call it tries to return self dot first number but where is this first number and when it tries to sum up with second number this also you don't have that information is not present right so in this class that information is sent at runtime while creating the object of that class in that way when you send 2 comma 3 this 2 comma 3 from here are sent back to first number and second number we were initializing our values here okay but here when you send without any arguments so how would it understand when you say first number it would be null so that your test will fail let's see what happens all right so it failed and we can see the logs you see that it is missing to required positional arguments which is a and b so when object is created it's not finding that so basically what you need to do what all this constructor is expecting you have to somehow give those values from here then only you can form the connection right so basically this constructor you have to invoke from your child constructor that's the concept let me show you you all know that constructor will be automatically called even if you don't declare it it's a default constructor 
So what is the syntax for our default constructor? Def double underscore init. So this constructor belongs to this child. So what you need to do here in your child constructor, you have to mandatorily call parent constructor if your parent constructor is not default. Okay, if it is the default, then you need not call. Automatically, it fixes. But in this case, it's not default. You have some code inside it. So this constructor have some meaning, right? So if that is the case, every time when you inherit from your parent class, first check if there is any constructor declaration. Yes, if it is so, then for your child class also, create one constructor. And in, in that constructor, first step, what you have to do is, this is our parent class name right calculator dot init right and here you need to now send values of a comma so this is how you have to form connection so self will be sent and thereafter 2 comma 9 or 10 something whatever you want perfect now successfully connection is formed and this is a rule okay so you can just google it in any programming language when you have used child and if there is a parent constructor you need to call it in a first step that's it perfect now you have provided a b as part of object oriented principal rule of inheritance when there are constructors are involved right now when you run this how does it work let's think let's say when you create object you know that first step what python does is invoke constructor it will come inside step one is to now invoke parent constructor so 2 comma 10 values we were successfully sending to our first number and second number so now these two have values thereafter when you call get complete data summation method and he, this time first number is second number are initialized with 2 comma 10 so that this code works and will not complete any error Let's see that. Perfect. Test ran and the output is 412. Let's see. I am automatically called. So let's sum up this and see how does it ran. We will scan this entire output now. Okay. So self.num2 is 200, right? 200 plus self.num is 300. And 412 is the output. So that means we have to get 100. 112 should be the summation. Then it matches. So what is summation method doing here? First number, last number is 12. 2 plus 10, 12. 12 plus calculator dot num, which is 100. Correct. 112. 112 plus 200 plus 100 is 412, which is our output. So perfect. If you want, you can take this code and try with different values and see. But you can also see that there are different logs are also printed. See, calculator dot init as you are calling this method, this also got printed. I am called automatically when object is created. Okay. So just remember all this and that's it. That's about inheritance. So two key things you have to remember here. One is just placing the parent class name and another is how we have to import. And third one is if you have constructor which is not default, then make sure you call your parent constructor in your child constructor. That should be the first step. And that's it. Thereafter, all connections will be proper and you can happily play with your parent class objects here. Check out here, we were not creating any object for calculator, but we are able to call all our parent class variables and methods. That's the concept of inheriting. When we are dealing with framework lectures, you will see actual implementation of all this. So here, just learn the concept of all the OOPS principles, but real, real time implementation, I will show from scratch when we are creating Python Selenium automation framework. Don't worry, there you will get more clear picture on how exactly this is used. So here is the concept and I'll meet you again with our actual implementation framework design. So that's all about this inheritance and see you in the next lecture.
Thank you.